How's it going everyone? And welcome back to another exciting video. Today, I'll be answering the question, if the iPhone 12 Pro Max is good enough as an editing computer. What I like about using the iPhone 12 Pro Max as a content creator is that it's an all-in-one system, meaning that you can film, edit, and publish everything from your mobile device. And I want to see how powerful the A14 processor on the iPhone 12 Pro Max is for video editing. So I have set up the iPhone 12 Pro Max sort of as a desktop computer. I have connected the keyboard and the mouse with the iPhone 12 Pro Max and I mounted the iPhone onto a tripod stand to make it look like a desktop computer. And I also angled it in a way to have a better view of the screen. To import all of the footages, I used a Lightning 2SD cable. Uh, the downside to using this is that there's no progress bar showing, which makes it hard to see if the transfer has been completed. Now to better demonstrate this, I will be doing a screen recording on the iPhone while editing the video, which already shows how powerful this small device is. Now I could connect the iPhone onto an external monitor, but for this video, I will just be using the small screen. As for the video editing application, I will be using LumaFusion. I find LumaFusion one of the most affordable and powerful mobile editing apps out there. Another reason why I prefer LumaFusion is because I can edit on the go and once I get back home to my real desktop uh, computer, I can export the project as an XML file and continue editing the project in Final Cut Pro, which is my main editing software. So some of the footages that I imported into to LumaFusion uh, will be 4K 10-bit in the log, which was shot on the Sony a7S 3 And I also imported 4K 10-bit Dolby Vision footage shot with the iPhone 12 Pro Max, just so we can see how it will perform. With that said, let's open up LumaFusion. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna press the plus button and I'm gonna name my project Tutorial. The frame rate is gonna be 25 frames per second because uh, I live in a PAL region and shot everything in 25 or 50 frames per second. Um, the frame aspect ratio is gonna be 16 by nine landscape and the color space will be a standard Rec. 709 10 bit for now. Once I'm done, I'm gonna hit the plus button over here and we now have everything set up. So the files are in the shared folder. As you can see, I have five clips over here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna select an in and out point. So I'm gonna go over here, probably gonna start from here and gonna end this video around here. I'm gonna hit O and I'm gonna put it onto the timeline. Now this footage was shot in 4K 10-bit uh, in log using the Sony A7S III. Let's now see how well it plays back. Plays back pretty smooth and I don't see any delays. So pretty, pretty amazing. And also the scrubbing works really good. And that is really important for me when I edit a video is that it doesn't lag so, so that I don't have to always wait. So I'm now gonna drag the other footages onto the timeline. Gonna select this one. Gonna select this as well. And I'm also going to select this clip. And the last clip, which was shot uh, using my iPhone 12 Pro Max uh, Dolby Vision. So I'm now gonna play back the video, uh, which was shot on the iPhone 12 Pro Max Dolby Vision. And let's listen to the sound of it. So I just went back to my car to grab something. I'm now heading towards George. So this doesn't sound that bad coming from the iPhone 12 Pro Max. 
and you can also use your headphones if you're doing sound design uh, but from what I'm hearing right now straight out of the iPhone 12 Pro Max it sounds really nice so let's start color grading this um, particular clip I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna head over to the color and effects and I usually go with the original here I have all the important parameters to start uh, manipulating my footage. So what I'm gonna do here, this was shot in a log, so I'm gonna pull down the shadows and lift up the highlights, as you can see. And the midtones, I'm just gonna pull down a little bit and this was shot during sunset so I don't want the highlights to be too high and I can also decrease the brightness over here and increase a little bit of the contrast not too much actually I'm also gonna increase the vibrance and the saturation make it a little bit more colorful and what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna change the hue a bit, make it, making it a little bit more reddish. And if I want, I can also apply a LUT on top of the footage, but I think this already looks great. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna apply a zoom in. So I'm gonna move the clip all, all the way to the beginning. I'm gonna hit the keyframe and then I'm gonna move it to around here then I'm gonna zoom in a little bit like that let's go back let's play the clip let's see how it looks like for demonstration purpose this looks really good so let's take this clip for example uh, I want to remove the audio from it <laughs> so I'm gonna double click on it now I'm gonna pull back the volume so that you can't hear anything. And I'm actually gonna cut it right here. I'm gonna hit the scissors tool and I'm gonna delete this one. So because this clip was shot in 50 frames per second, I'm gonna slow it down. So I'm gonna double click on it and I'm gonna go to this icon over here, the speed and reverse, and I'm gonna reduce it around half the speed and when playing it back I get a nice slow motion video and what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna color grade this beautiful clip I'm gonna double click on it head over to the um, color and effects and I'm gonna hit original again and I'm gonna pull down the shadows and also increases the midtones. I'm just gonna decrease, um, and I'm gonna decrease the midtones just to give it a little bit more contrast. So this already looks really nice. And the brightness, I might increase it a little bit, and also increase the contrast not too much just a little bit increase the saturation vibrance and what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna change the hue a bit make it look a little bit more dreamy and this already looks really awesome. So let's see how it looks like when playing it back. <whistles> nice. That looks amazing. Okay. The editing works really well using the mouse and the keyboards. If you know the shortcuts, you'll be way faster uh, when editing. 
What's also cool about this setup is that I can not only use the mouse, but also my fingers to zoom in or zoom out or quickly tap on a clip, which is also great. But you probably won't have to do it that often because if you know your shortcuts, um, you'll probably be faster. So let's now export the video. Um, the video in total is around one and a half minutes. Um, I'm gonna hit this icon over here, head over to movie and then go to the photos. And over here we have resolution, which is set to 4K and the frame rate is 25 frames per second. The video quality I will set to standard. Uh, depending where I want to upload it, um, web or economy would work well if you upload it uh, to YouTube. Um, the audio quality is 48 kilohertz, HEVC, video and audio included. And below you have the export info. So this will be around 413 megabytes. And it will take around one and a half minute to export the video. So let's test that out. Okay, I have now set the timer over here and let's do this. Three, two, one. The time is running. So the export is gonna be finished soon. All right, it took almost one minute to export that one minute and 30 second clip. So this is pretty amazing because we have 4K footage shot in 10-bit in log and also a 4K 10-bit Dolby Vision. And this is pretty amazing for a smartphone to accomplish. So you have now seen a basic video editing workflow uh, importing the files, editing the video and exporting the project. I see issues when importing the files onto the iPhone. I mean, not having that progress bar visible makes it really hard to see if the transfer has been completed. Now a solution to that would be to use the Narbox 2.0, which I don't have, but basically it's a portable SSD drive that is compatible with LumaFusion that allows you to edit off the external drive. The editing part worked really great and it felt very smooth. The reason why I still prefer using Final Cut Pro is because LumaFusion doesn't have any scopes and, and waveforms to color correct the footage accurately. As for the rendering process, I was amazed how fast the iPhone 12 Pro Max exported the video. I don't think it could export as fast as the iMac Pro that I have, but for a phone like this, this is very impressive. So I think you can really use the iPhone 12 Pro Max as a, your all-in-one tool, filming in 4K, 10-bit Dolby Vision, editing the footage smoothly in LumaFusion, and fast exporting the project. And as you can see, you can use a setup like this and even connect the iPhone 12 Pro Max to an external monitor to improve your workflow. Now let me know in the comments, do you solely use your iPhone as an all-in-one system? would love to know. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe so that I can keep creating awesome tutorials for you guys. Now, if you haven't downloaded my free smartphone filmmaking guide, make sure to do that, which will help you find the right tools to get started. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I will see you soon.